Hello everybody, today we'll be reviewing 480 Super and we'll find out which cards is worth your money and which cards you have to avoid. And this series is very interesting because from previous cards, the cards which have been performing very good in this series unfortunately decided to go with uh, another route and it turns out that I cannot recommend them anymore, at, at least for 480 Super. So let's start from the Asus 480 Super tough. These cards cost eleven $1 hundred, hundred dollars more than MSRP. Which, if we we'll look previous cards, for example, the four seventy Ti Super, it was coming at the same price as MSRP. But here they decided to increase the price by one hundred dollars. And let's see what they are offering it for that. Ex so let's have a look what card what this card can offer for extra one hundred dollar which they improved maybe they used something which we don't know so this card is quite heavy one let's have a look let's open the PCB here it's better to have here so here we can see the VRM chips they have a direct contact with the heatsink and other VRM chips has a direct contact with the heatsink. VRM chokes being cooled through the air coming through the fins and the same story here. It's being cooled with the air coming through the fins. But they decided, like you see, they have a spaces here, here, here. But they decided, I don't know why, to map uh, some VRM chips here and here, which obviously need to have a direct contact. But as we can see here on the heatsink, there is no thermal pads for these two VRM chokes, which means they are not being cooled directly. They are not transferring heat to the heatsink. They're just being cooled by the air because let's see where they like like this hole and this one so this one right above the hole which is falling he somewhere here and the only air can cool the vrm chip and the vrm chokes here and this one a little bit to the left again it's falling down somewhere here so there is no even a metal plate to put the thermal pad but I don't know why they can make this plate a little bit bigger like this, use a little bit more material. At least they are charging hundred dollars more over the MSRB to give you at least direct contact for these two chips. So this is already not good. So here we can see, and those two ones, as I said, for the memory, and they are not being cooled directly with the heatsink. So if you are watching my channel already, at least a couple series, you know that this type of cooling is getting bad rating. And this is again, this is not the components quality. This is the cooling of components and it's getting bad. Doesn't matter the temperature for the GPU, for the memory, two VRM chips is not being directly cooled and they are asking $100 more. Let's see what VRM chips they are using. So they are using SIC, which is uh, not bad and not good, something in the middle, which is okay. They are using 12 phases. Again, if we'll compare with the Founders Edition, it's one phase more. The power limit, the lowest out of all these cars is 320, so they have some additional power limit, but again, for this generation of car, power limit doesn't mean much, especially if you are not going to do some hardcore overclocking, you don't have to pay like so serious attention to these numbers. And if you will see how they overclock, there is cases when the lowest power limit cars can overclock higher than the higher power limits. So it's generally speaking, like it's, again, it's it's, it's not the point where you have to pay your attention when choosing which car to buy. But this one is definitely the point, the category which you have to pay attention. So the temperature wise, again, 63 degree, 
it's a good temperature. 62 for the memory, normalized 61, again running very quiet. Here you can see that you can go even quieter and just gain like six degree more on the uh, GPU core and six degree more on the memory, which is like nothing. And if you can hear this difference, I would strongly suggest to go with the quiet bias or tune it with the MSI afterburner, get even the quieter operation. But again, $100 more with this type of flow, I cannot recommend this card and I will say stay away from this one. Let's have a look. Maybe the Strix is better. So for the Strix, we already know they are going to charge a lot, especially 4E80, they were charging previously for the Strix one, like 1,365, at least this one, and this was uh, initially 1,450, if I'm not mistaken. They decreased a lot, but here with the Super, it's less, but again, like $250 over the MSRP for the Super. So let's say, let's see what we are getting for this $250 more. What they can offer us, and if you have to spend that money for this GPU. Here, we can see again, VRM chips has a direct contact here, chokes, this is even worse because under the metal plate, there is no air movement. So this one will run pretty hot, but nothing to worry. These ones, they can run hot without any issue, but like better to have at least some air blowing on them because nobody knows how long they will work with that high temperatures. Because this is a new card, there is no experience with these ones. So here is a little bit better. So here we are chokes, we can see they are directly and here there is a fins, so the air can come through the fins and then can cool down this part. Here they again, they went with the same direction. They placed the one, two, three compared to the two VRM chokes here. But here you can see there is a base and they put one, two, three, and even four. And the fourth one, if we look, it's laying somewhere here. Maybe they put this thermal page just to equalize the pressure on the heatsink, not to have any shortages, I don't know. But this one is not connected to any VRM chokes, just this three. But they did it. They charged you $250 more to put like three small dots of thermal pads to have these ones direct contact. And that's why also on the back plate, they have a couple of templates. On this one, I marked as a good one. It's not very good because some chucks is missing the direct contact, but it's it's a good one. Also the fan types for this one, I have a confirmed information that they use the double ball bearing, which has a longer lifespan compared to the sleeve bearing. So this is a plus. But again, if card fails, the fan doesn't matter if they are still working. So let's see what VRM chips they are using. MPS, this is a top quality MPS controller. So this is top quality, $250 more to get 18 phases, six phase more. Top quality VRM chips, 420 power limit. Again, it's nothing like to worry about it. And again, on the same quantity of memory, they are using one more VRM chips, which decreasing the load on the ch chocks and the VRM chips, so the temperature should be even lower. Plus, they have a direct contact, which a tough version doesn't have. And for the memory, they are using SIC. I don't know why they decided to save like on three VRM chips and use the lower quality VRM chips, but they decided that Maybe if they say a lot, these three VRM chips with the lower quality VRM chips can save some substantial amount of money for them. I don't know why. For the temperatures, it's even better. 60 degree on the core, normalized 58, 66 on memory, 
and probably the memory temperature is a little bit high because it has more contact for the components, so more heat being transferred to the heatsink. Even this one rises even quieter than the tough version, but again, like $150 more over the tough. Maybe it's worth it if you are getting good cooling com compared to the bad one, and if you are getting six more phases and better components. But let's see, maybe there is some other cards in this list which can offer better value for your money. So let's go to the next one, it's a Gigabyte. We already know from previous models that Gigabyte in this series improved their component cooling to the good or very good rating. They have covered everything with the thermopads. So they're charging $50 more instead of $100 as tough for their improvements which they can offer you. Let's see what is the cooling. So here, let's open this one first. Okay, and again, beautiful. Here you can see VRM chips, have, they even have capacitors touching the heatsink, they have these capacitors, these, they, have, they have everything touching the heatsink to the thermal pads, everything. Here, here. But what they are missing? Yes, they are missing again. One, two, three. Let's see. They have a plate here. And let's see each other. So this is the top. Here we can see the place for the connector. This is a hole. One, two. So this one is right above the hole. There is a place on the heatsink. Why they didn't put the thermal pad? Maybe it's the quality issue, quality control issue. The uh, employee in the factory just forgot to put the thermal pads. I don't know, but it's clearly missing here for this one. This one again above the hole. Here, again, we see there is a copper plate. It's not the same as with the TAF because TAF doesn't have that area to place anything. Just they cut it that piece in that way, so nothing left here. But here, there is a plenty copper plate, the base, where they can put the thermal pads to have this one touching, this one touching, and let's have a look on this one. So this is right on the line with this hole. This is the hole. We see they, you see they created this piece. But this piece, as this one is has much higher height than the VRM chip, so this one is lying above than this one. And this one is falling somewhere here. So there is almost no way that they can put something, some thermal paste to have this one as direct contact which I'm assuming that initially from the factory, they decided that, again, there is no need to put the thermal pads here. And here, if you will pay attention, there is a thermal pad for this piece, which is touching these thermal chokes. But this VRM chip, touching nothing. This choke, again, touch, not touching this one because there is a gap, and that gap should be filled with the thermal pad, which is missing. And here... This one, again, there is no thermal pad for these VRM chokes, but they, very important, this VRM chip, which is falling somewhere here between this capacitor's line and these VRM chips, which is this VRM chips line, a uh, VRM chokes line and the capacitor's thermal pad. So it's falling somewhere here and like there is no way to put some thermal pads here and have a contact with here, which I cannot understand why they did that. Because... These cars used to be, you see, good, very good. It's tough, very good, very good. So in Super Series, I'm quite disappointed with Asus and Gigabyte, why they decided to go with this route. And they both charging you extra money when in the Super, Asus is not asking anything more than the MSRB to give you very good component cooling and Gigabyte is asking $50 extra again to give you very good component cooling. Here 
They are asking $100 more. They are not giving. They are taking from you the quality of your card. And again, the Gigabyte, there is no thermopads on the back plate. So nothing being transferred to this huge sheet of the metal. And also, they're using the Alpha Omega VRM chips. Another bad point. Giving you 16 phases and three phases for the memory. And for the memory, why? SIC, which is a good compared to the Alpha Omega. But they put the SIC on the memory, but they decided to put the Alpha Omega on the GPU. So $50 more, yes. Like here, if you compare these two cars, the temperature is like lower, noise a little bit higher. So here we can see if we increase the noise to 35 dB, temperature is coming 61.8. So if we come to 33, maybe these temperatures will be 66, which is quite okay. So you will make the same noise level as the TAF. You're paying $50 less. You're getting more phases, but lower quality VRM chips. So I cannot even make a decision which one you have to choose if you stuck within these two. But if you have more cars to choose, I will skip these two definitely. So just let's mark this way. Let's a little bit increase the font size. <clears throat> let's see what Galax can offer. Maybe they have something better. So let's see the price. Again, asking $50 more. Okay. If you can offer something for that $50, maybe we will take that. Here, let's see the plate. So what we have here, you see, VRM chips has a direct contact, VRM chokes has a direct contact. From this side, the same story. Again, they have a three VRM chips and chokes for the memory and the chokes being cooled with the air, there is a space here, and the VRM chips, you see, one, two, three. They put it thermopads, so the base plate has a direct contact with all these three. And even here we can see the uh, residue from thermopads, so it's touching and cooling everything. So this card is getting a good rating for the component cooling, even though there is no thermopads on the back plate. At least it has a thermal pads for all VRM chips. Let's have a look what VRM chips they are using. Again, Alpha Omega one, which is not good. So we're marking it as a lower quality one. Plus, again, 16 phases. If we, I am going to choose between these two, I will get this one over the Gigabyte and over the ASUS. It's $50 less. It compared to the ASUS and same price. Temperature wise, 64 degree, 32.6 dB, which is quite good. Almost equal to the TAF. For the memory, 68 normalized. Again, there was some error in the tech power up. And especially, there is a lot of errors for this card I already found. So, most probably, there was a lot of cards introduced at the same time. They just have been tired and made some mistakes or their uh, uh, room for the testing got hot and the temperatures were not correct ones. So here it shows the 64.4, but if it's running like 32.6 dB, 64, you're increasing dB, which means you're increasing the fan speed. So the temperature cannot go up. It should go low, lower. So I assume always they did a mistake and put Instead of two or three, they put four. All their room got hot. So I adjusted to temperature. To my calculations, it should be roughly 62.4, which is not bad. I would say it's very good. But again, $50 more, yes. If we have these three cars to choose, I will choose this one. At least everything is good except the VRM chips. Let's see what other cars can offer. The next one is the Expert from MSI. This is a new card. In previous 
cars. I never saw the expert series. There is a van tools, gaming geeks, but no experts. So they decided to make the expert for the experts. Let's see what it can offer. They, they charging you $150 more as you are an expert. And we want to have this card. So here, What they offer? VRM chips, direct contact, VRM direct contact, again from this side the same. Here, thermal pads for VRM choke, thermal pads for VRM chips, the same here. Both VRM, all VRM chokes, all VRM chips has a direct contact in this card. See? At this one, we see there is a place of the thermal paste, so most probably it fall off when they were tearing down this card because it's clearly visible that there is a place of the thermal paste. So it's not that they are missing it from the factory. So it has been there, it fall off. So this is already very good. And the back plate, they have only this one, maybe not to have a shorts or this is doing some function, I don't know. But so far it's good. So it's getting the very good rating, okay. And they are offering 13 phases. They are using NCP, which is again, has less failure rate than NCP for the memory. So the temperatures is high, running 35.1. And again, 35.1, there is a error here, is the same. 35, but here, I don't know why, they got 17.7. .7. Like, it cannot be 0 0.1 dB, it will be maybe, I don't know, 4 RPMs less fan speed, increase the temperature by almost 2 degrees. So I assume it should be the same, 69. Memory, again, it's high, but as I said many times, when you have very good rating for the component cooling, more heat is being transferred to the heat sink. So your GPU temperatures is rising, your memory temperatures is rising. But for memories, I always said, anything below 80 degrees, you even don't have to think about it. It's already good. For the GPU, again, 69 is pretty acceptable, pretty good. You can even make it 70 to 73 and have even lower uh, noise from this card. And one very interesting thing, which I forgot to mention. So this card, it has a fuse on the PCI Express lane and fuse on the power. So this is the only card which I remember from all these series, which is covered in this spreadsheet that has a fuses on both sides. So if it will fail, it will keep your components and your card in the maximum so it will uh, be at the lowest damage to the card and to your to and your components because it says the, these two fuses and it has two more phases compared to the founders edition they're asking 150 dollars more and if a little bit noisy operation is not the point that you have to avoid i will say i can recommend this card if you want something at the to buy some at the higher level. So this is a very good component cooling, good components, quiet operation. If you will adjust a little bit with the MSI afterburner and uh, very compact size. Let's see what founders edition because that's the second compact card. He will see it's even almost the same, just one centimeters narrower. So let's see which this card what can offer. And this is obviously coming at the MSRP $1,000. So it will be very interesting comparison between this expert and the founders edition to see if it's worth $150 more. Or you can just grab the founders edition and call it a day. So founders edition, component cooling, VRM chips as a direct contact. And VRM chips has a direct contact VRM chocks under the base plate. And here also, so no air, no air touching, circulating, cooling these ones. 
the same here one two three four five the arm chokes is just under the base plate not touching anything only the vrm chips here we can see one two three four five all has a direct contact so by founders edition thinking about having direct contact for all vrm chips when asus and gigabyte they suddenly decided they can miss out like a couple vrm chips and it should be fine no it's not fine it, especially for the gigabyte where, where i cannot understand you put a big uh, copper base you made a small part to extend to have a direct contact with the vrm choke but you didn't extend it far enough to have direct contact with the vrm chips and you didn't put the even thermal pads so again back plate has a thermal pad so at least it's transferring some kind of heat so it's getting a good rating because only the vrm chokes is missing the direct contact and the components, top tier components here, MPS, MPS controller, and also for the memory. We remember that the Strix for the memory, they were using SIC. But the Founders Edition using MPS everywhere. Just 11 phases, the lowest quantity, 355 power limit. Again, it's nothing to pay attention. Temperature-wise, it has better temperature because obviously, you see, it's almost same noise level. Again, there was an error here, which I corrected. There is no way that this card can show these numbers. 65.6, like 3 degrees more, just 0.3 decibels lower. I hardly doubt it. It should be similar, 63. So, same noise level, 6 degree cooler, because all VRM chokes doesn't have a contact with the heatsink. And VRM chokes, they run very hot. They designed in that way, so when they have a direct contact, it transferring a lot of heat and it increasing the temperatures for the core, for the memory. So again, and here if we compare these two, obviously, for the direct contact for the VRM chokes, between the direct contact of the VRM chokes and between the quality components when it's an MPS, at its MSRP price, the only deciding factor will be these fuses. So if you ever like had a bad experience of your cart is uh, going bad, maybe you got also damaged it, like your motherboard, your CPU, or your like the VRM chips have been failed and it destroyed your GPU. So you cannot even repair it after the warranty. So here you have to decide if you want that extra safety peace of mind maybe you can pay 150 dollars more because ncp is also a good quality components but not as good as the mps a little bit tune it and get like very good card so between these two it's like as i'm saying it's all coming to this part but if you never had a bad experience and you think but this time it also will not be any failures with your GPU, then you can save $150, get the FE, have a cooler operation. You can even decrease this noise level even lower and have a same compact card. But again, this is my recommendation at least at this point. And if you want something top tier, then why not buy this one? It's better buy this one than the Strix. It's $100 less. A little bit noisy again you can tune it but has uh, fuses and the ncp is not as bad because this is we already know this is not 100 percent mps all vrm chips it's only for the gpu for the memory they decided to use sic but again this is cheaper so and has very good rating for the components cooling so if you want a top tier i'm recommending this one for the msrp price this one but we still have three cards to go the next one let's see again pny same msrp one thousand dollars let's see what they can offering maybe it will be better than the founders edition who knows let's see here we go vrm chips direct contact chokes have a air blowing on it the same here from this side 
one, two, here, one, two, again. They have a direct contact here. We can again see that this company, they even used to be the lower quality cards, but they, they are not saving money on the direct contact for the VRM chips. And these chips has direct contact and they even place some pads here. I don't know why there is nothing here, but again, backplate, nothing. So it's getting the good rating. It's already good. Temperature wise and the quality of components, NCP, same quantity as Founders Edition 11 phases, the lowest power limit. Again, it's nothing to talk about it, it's just here for you to have a look. Again, temperature a little bit higher for the GPU, and, but the noise level is lower. You can go even lower, have a little bit higher temperature, have a good car. So between these two, if the boat cart has $1,000, the deciding factor will be the, this one. So it's a more compact card. It has top tier and the face is the same, but this is a top tier, the RM chips. Temperature is also good. You can bring that to 66 and have a similar noise level. So this one is winning over this one. But again, if you don't have a founder's edition in your country, you can go ahead and buy this one. But if it's available, buying Founders Edition. The next card is the Palit Gaming Pro. Let's see what is the Pro in this naming. $50 more, they're asking for the Pro. Maybe it's something similar to the Expert, who knows? Let's have a look. Let's have a look what is Pro in this card. Maybe you will say it's Pro Components, who knows? So. Here we can instantly see they put this metal plate to have a space for these VRM chips to have a direct contact, but not, that's not the same as a direct contact with the heatsink. It's a direct contact to the metal plate, then metal plate has a contact with the heatsink. Again, VRM chips on this side has a direct contact, chokes has a direct contact, VRM chokes one, two, three, four, all have a direct contact for the VRM. Chips, VRM chokes being cooled with the air coming through the fins. The back plate doesn't have thermal pads. So this one is getting okay because this one compared to the previous PMY doesn't have a direct contact with the heatsink. There is a metal plate between the VRM chips and the heatsink. So this type of cooling I always mark as okay. And they are using NCP in memory and GPU. Just one phase is more. Let's see what the temperature is. So temperature 67, so it's running even lower noise level. So here we can see between these thick cards, we can see like this. They decided to make a little bit noisy, but have cooler operation, a little bit quieter compared to this one, three degrees more, a little bit quieter than this one, one degree more. So this is what you can get like by tuning with the MSI afterburner. All this card, you can do the same trick. You can go, you can make Founders Editions, similar temperatures, similar noise level, it's very easily. So there is no difference between this and this one is asking $50 more to give you what? Just one phase more? No, thank you. I will go with Founders Edition. It has the best of the best. It's even best than Strix because again, this is only half. And the last one is a Zotac. Let's see how much they want. They want hundred dollar more. Let's see what they can offer for that hundred dollar more. Let's see. I'm very curious. Here we go. VRM chips, VRM chokes from both sides. They have a direct contact. Here again, one, two, three. Here again, one, two, three, four. Again, one is here just for equalizing, I guess. All has a direct contact, but the RM chokes from this side only being cooled through the air. Big plate, there's a thermal pads, it's already good. So this is getting a good rating. Let's see what components is Zotac using. NCP, NCB, it's already good. Let's see what will be 480 Alpha Omega. So they decided to go with the NCP. One phase more, good cooling, the temperature 65, Noise level is terrible. Again here, 
there is a discrepancy. 35, they put it 65.2. How it can be 65.2? You already have 65, and it's very noisy. You can definitely hear 39 dB. 65, 39. You go down 34.5, you have 67. So you even like z with these numbers, you're already showing that there is an error in the normalized results because you're getting 65, 35. It's not possible. Because 39 already giving you 65. If you make it like 35, it should be somewhere around 68, 67. But again, which is... So I adjusted it. But this is not good. So we're marking it high. And if you want to have... If you are not playing in the... Or not using your PC in the headset, this you will hear and it, this will definitely have a negative effect on your experience. So you have to adjust it, bring it 33 and have 70 degrees here, maybe 70 degrees here, which is quite okay. Two more faces compared to this one. NCP is lower quality and $100 more. So again, no thank you. If this is the case, it's for me, it's better to pay $50 more get more compact card, much better component cooling. Temperatures like this 39, you will make like 35 will be the same level of temperatures, more or less one plus minus one degree. So temperatures will be the same. Noise level will be the same, but it has much better component cooling and the two fuses, which is very good. And it's just for $50 more. I will go with this one. So this was the last card, and again, I hope this one will be the last series for this uh, NVIDIA 4 series card, and the next series will be regarding AMD. I'm very, very interested to see that cards from inside, what improvements they can offer you compared to the NVIDIA ones, or if there is any improvement, so maybe there's, there is some downgrades. And we'll try even to do some cross-platform comparison between the quality of components of AMD and Finzia. But before finishing that, I will most probably make another series. So click subscribe, stay tuned to the more videos. This is the next one, which I'm going to do to make a comparison between all the new cards, like 4080 Super versus 480 to see like the same tough if it was improved or it was degraded the same 4070 ti super versus 4070 ti the same 4070 versus 4070 super so in that series i will be making comparison between the let's say the the, the same manufacturer cars to see if they improved something or not which in case of the asus we already know on the gigabyte that the 480 super is a clear uh like fall of quality and we cannot recommend these cards at least with this type of flows and then after that series we'll go to the amd and we'll see what card they can offer and then these cards especially this card will push regular 480 prices second and even lower as i already managed to get my zotac 480 for seven hundred dollars, it is. It was barely used, maybe like six months. I disrouted it, installed it in my mini ITX case. So I'm testing it to see how long it will last with the Alpha Omega VRM chips. But it has a lot of them. Like if you remember, the most twenty-four. So they should run much cooler because there is much less load on that ones. But who knows? Time will show. Thank you for watching. So if you have something, some ideas, if you are not agree with me or if you have something to comment, please feel free to comment and see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.